Anytime you're ready. I am good to go. Okay. Well, thanks for attending everyone today. Um, I had Blake Reed playing Room to Grow there earlier on, and I thought it was kind of a decent theme for today's 4-H. Uh, members, leaders, parents, everyone's got to come up with new ideas on, on how to complete your 4-H your year. And I think that that really comes down to the adaptability that 4-H members and, and parents and leaders have. So my name's Rod Turner. I'm the, uh, a member of the Beef Advisory Council, or more, more known as BAC, uh, and also your moderator for today. So uh, before we start, I just wanted to let everyone know if you, you're having problems navigating Zoom as we go through the, through the conference or webinar, just take and move your cursor over parts of the screen and you'll be able to come up with a chat box, a Q&A box, and other features that you can, can also um, see on, on Zoom. One of the things that uh, we're, we're asking that, you know, if you're having problems with sound or issues with your, with your screen or anything like that, send us a chat. Uh, Lexi and, and uh, I believe also Shelly Ann is on uh, that can answer those questions during, during the webinar. And also um, any questions that you have throughout the webinar, please answer, ask them during, in the Q&A box and we will be answering all the questions after everyone's done speaking today. Um, I think a lot of members have already viewed the livestock sales webinar that was on earlier in, in uh, April on how to sell their marketing projects, market projects, but I think now everyone's sort of coming to the finalized uh, methodologies on how you're gonna actually market these uh, projects. And that's where really today's webinar takes over on how to market and being able to picture and video these, these animals. So just to go over a little bit of the agenda today, uh, we've already done our welcome. We're going to have Diane Fidstad uh, give us some back to basics marketing. I think that everyone has to realize that in these times, everything that we can do to help market these these uh, projects, we're going to we should be doing that. And Diane's going to help us out with some of that. We also have uh, Jordi Buba, who is going to be going through some of the social media aspects of marketing, but also looking at picturing and videoing your project. And that's important to make sure that you're putting your best foot forward as well as your your animals. Uh, uh, pictures as well and making sure that they, they look great to the public that potentially could be buying that. Lastly, we're going to go through um, some 4-H branding with Lexi Hoy, just making sure that things are done in the correct mannerisms and that uh, everything's done properly and nobody's going to get in trouble. And then at the end, we'll also uh, have a question and answer period. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen and Diane is going to be uh, starting to share hers and going to give you a little bit of information about Diane. Diane Finstad is a familiar face and a voice in Alberta's farm community. She spent over 30 years covering agriculture and rodeo from Red Deer through TV, radio and print. Now working as a communication specialist, she does a variety of projects ranging from writing agricultural stories to hosting a conferences to view, interviewing rodeo competitors. Diane is a board member for Lakeland College and Red Deer's Westerner Park. She grew up in Southern Alberta where her family has ranched for more than a century. She's a proud 4-H alumni and worked with Kim McConnell on the enhancing excellence for 4-H process. So with that, we're gonna turn it over to Diane and uh, welcome and thank you for taking your time out of your day to help us with this webinar. Well, thanks very much, Rod. It is uh, fun for me to be here and to be part of the 4-H program in what I know is a busy time of the year for 4-H members as you uh, look forward to the day of completing your project. And I hope you're all healthy and, and safe out there. And I know for many of us uh, that live in the country, uh, in maybe some ways life isn't all that much different. And yet, as we look around us, life is so much different. And, you know, when you think about it, a month and a half ago, if someone had told you that, uh, well, school may or may not even ever happen again this year, this school year, you would never have believed them. And yet here we are. And so, as Rod mentioned, we really are adapting to a new world, um, especially with our 4-H projects. And I just love seeing some of the innovative ways that clubs across Alberta, across the country, and really probably around the world are coming up with uh, for new and different approaches and uh, for wrapping up their projects and holding achievement events. Uh, so it can be a very creative and innovative time as we look around. 
Now you may be bummed that uh, you can't have what you're used to having for a sale day for your market animal, uh, but I'm here to tell you that there are opportunities and skills that can be gained throughout this whole process. Uh, so I've uh, put together a few notes that hopefully will um, help us out and uh, knowing a little more about marketing. Um, so as we think about the marketing challenge, that's really what uh, we're, uh, you know, working on and, and wondering about today. And it's all about selling animals online and how we can get the word out and find uh, buyers in this uh, new world. So when we think about it, um, there are some differences. What's different? Well, of course, we can't get together and show our animals side by side and market in a traditional sale ring like we're used to. But there are some things that haven't changed. And one of those is, of course, your pride in your project. And you still have those great 4-H calves and lambs to sell. Plus, the bonus is that people are looking more than ever uh, to fill their freezers with locally raised uh, food products. And luckily for you, you can help meet that need uh, because you've got some great beef and lamb ready to go. And so I think the challenge is really to finish well on this year's 4-H project. And we've got no script, no past experience, no playbook to work with. So we're all adapting on the fly and uh, working together, uh, sharing ideas with other clubs and leaders. And we're all learning to do by doing uh, together. So when they asked me to help out with this, I was trying to think, well, you know, what, what would help you out? And, and uh, you know, Rod talking about going back to basics is really fitting because that's what I had to do. I had to go back and think of some of the things that I learned in college and uh, on the job about information sharing and how best to do that. And also a little bit about sales. I mean, uh, you know, as a reporter, you never want to think of yourself as a salesman, but really uh, in this world of 4-H, sales is what we're doing. We've all learned how important sales is. And I think it's the challenge is going to be doing it a little more hands-on uh, than what you've had to. And so the challenge I would uh, issue is to get involved personally as members. Um, sure, you've maybe as a club decided to go online and you've got a, a, the local auction market or an online sales uh, platform ready to go. So could you just leave it up to them? Well, maybe, but that's not necessarily putting a great finish on your project. Could you leave it up to your club or your leaders or the sale organizers? Maybe, uh, but I have noticed over the years in my work in agriculture that whether it's a bull sale or a chuck wagon tarp auction or a horse sale, uh, the sellers who do the best are, are the ones who do their homework. And it's all about personal connections. And I think it's a real opportunity for you as individual 4-H members uh, to do some, some fun things and to, to really get involved. So um, where to start, I guess, uh, you know, when you think about it, uh, what, what do you need? Um, you need uh, some buyers, right? Uh, every successful sale needs buyers. And so you want to look at some of your buyers, uh, the past buyers, uh, some potential buyers, and learn a little bit about your audience and what its needs are. What are they looking for? How can you help meet their needs? And then, of course, develop your pitch. And your pitch is sort of what you can tell them about how you can meet their needs and, and how you can help them out with everything. So uh, that is one way you can get involved personally. So then I, I guess uh, you think about, well, how do you find your buyers? And I guess I would say it's a little bit like being on a good detective show. You need to look around. So do some digging in the past. Who have some of your past buyers been? Uh, maybe for you as a member personally, maybe your club can look around and see what your past buyers list has been and be good to follow up with some of those past buyers and say, hey, look, we're doing things differently this year. Make sure they're aware of it so that if they had great success and, and love supporting 4-H and you, that they know how to find you in this different format. So make sure that you connect uh, with your past buyers. And I had the privilege of hearing the great Temple Grandin uh, at an event in uh, Lloydminster in March. And her big thing is become a better observer, whether that's working with livestock or whether that's in school, it's all about looking around and becoming a good observer. So I'm encouraging you to look around and uh, look at businesses where maybe your family has been a customer or you've been a customer, um, businesses that have supported 4-H in the past. Maybe look around for past 4-H members, potential buyers, maybe it's somebody in your community that you could help out or that might be interested in purchasing a calf from you. So then Excuse the next me, uh, question. Diane, is, yes. Uh, are you sharing your screen or? Oh, I thought I was. 
Uh, just, we're, we're just seeing you, so we thought we'd oh, better Oh, you know what? I bet you I forgot to do the share screen. Sorry. I had it all clicked up there, but... Uh, Now are you seeing that? There we go, yep. Okay, I'll just get that into from the beginning. Okay. Okay, then we should be caught up. Okay, so how do you reach these buyers then? Um, I guess I, I have to give you a news flash that not everybody is on TikTok or Instagram or even on Facebook. And so I think the big message is to consider all the options that are out and around. And you need to um, reach beyond the audience you know. Uh, maybe if you're on uh, one social media platform, don't think that that's the only one out there. You have to really consider all the options and look at the audience that you want and the kind of media uh, that they are using. Uh, so what's the best way uh, to reach them? And so I want you to kind of look around in your community and, and do you have local media there? Is there a newspaper in your community? Is there a radio station? I know that some of you have been um, you know, working with a local radio station and might be doing those great uh, annual uh, 4-H voices on the air, uh, promoting your local sale. And so that's a wonderful opportunity uh, to get involved. Um, but if, even if um, you're not, your club isn't involved in that directly, uh, you know, send a note to the local radio station. Um, put together a little story about what your club is doing. Maybe you've got a club reporter still and, and pass it along to the, the newspaper. Maybe even in the local PV Mart or the UFA or whatever is the place that's still open and serving agricultural customers, maybe you can put a note up on the bulletin board. Um, you know, agricultural news and news publications, uh, check those out. Uh, maybe there's a way that you can submit some information to those. If you look at most of those, they'll have a way of contact us. You look on that page and there's a way to send them a note um, and let them know. The county, a lot of the counties have a paper that goes out uh, to let people know about what's happening in uh, the you know, municipal council member, uh, minutes. So tap into that and let them know, um, put that uh, note in about what, what you're doing. Even your local politician, if you send a note to your county councillor or your um, MLA, then maybe they can help spread the word too. And so when you're putting that information together, I guess the big thing to um, remember is um, that you really need to explain the basics. I know that in our 4-H world, everybody knows 4-Hs and what they mean, but you can never assume, especially if you're going after some new buyers, that they would know what the 4-Hs stand for, what 4-H is all about, what your project is, and you know how it means that they can uh, connect with you uh, as a buyer. So uh, be sure and uh, look at, 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 at explaining some of the basics in, in whatever information you're doing. And sometimes your, your club reporters maybe, again, can help out with that. Um, and, uh, you know, another one to even consider, especially if you're connecting with your past buyers, is maybe even a handwritten letter. Um, people are looking at cards and letters a lot differently than they used to. Uh, so that might even be a way to stand out from the crowd as well. Um, so when you get to telling the story, make sure that you personalize it. Uh, get some of your story basics in there. Remember that pictures tell a thousand words. So try and include a picture maybe of your project um, and personalize it. I, it doesn't matter whether it's a 4-H speech or, or marketing your animal. Tell your story. Does your animal, um, you know, have a, an interesting name or a past background? Is it one that you picked out from the herd yourself or uh, that you had an interesting story about buying it or was he a good eater? Uh, you know, try and, and personalize it with your own experience. And then what is your hook? Uh, what is, makes your story unique from everyone else? Um, do, do you, does your animal have a clever name? Um, is, do you have a unique plan for the money? Are you hoping to help others? You know, uh, try and find something that might be your hook. And, and I know as, as Jordy comes up next and talks about picturing your animals, if you're gonna be in there with your animal, uh, I always remember my parents telling me before I walked in the show ring, remember to smile, a smile goes a million miles. So uh, be sure and uh, include that if you're doing any video or picture work on it. So a couple of things to remember about uh, personalizing. And then a couple of story basics. Uh, sometimes you want a strong lead, make sure that you get 
something that off the top that uh, catches people's attention. Uh, be clear and concise. You can't go on and on. Stick to the facts. Uh, make sure you're balanced. Uh, something that people can relate to, maybe make it the pocketbook issue. Look, if you want to uh, get some great quality beef that may be cheaper than what you could buy in the store, uh, you know, try and appeal to their pocketbook. Um, make sure you answer, why should I care? If I'm a reader, if I'm a listener, if I'm uh, watching this on social media, why should I care about it? Try and answer that question. And of course, include all the pertinent details. And so I would also say to be positive and persistent, uh, really take a proactive approach. This is a new opportunity, not a lost tradition. And believe me, the world is looking for some good news stories now, and you've got a good news story to tell. So uh, take that approach on it. Make sure you're, you're telling people they've got an opportunity to get some great forage beef in, or lamb in their freezer. But also remember to be sensitive. I mean, maybe some of your buyers that have always been there from past years haven't been able to be open at all and won't be able to help you out this year. So uh, listen and adapt. Or maybe they say, well, you know, we can't afford to buy a full steer this year. Uh, you could say, well, you know, we have an option where you could get a half beef. You know, so listen to what their needs are and what they, if they tell you no, be a little bit persistent, but don't push it too far, being sensitive to where uh, they may be at. So keep that in mind. Another thing to do is to, to really work your, net, your own network. You may say, well, I'm, I'm just a youth, but how can I have a network? But you do, you have friends, you have family, you have uh, connections through school, through sports. Uh, maybe it's a good time to connect with some of the people you've met at 4-H camps and see what they're doing in their clubs, share ideas. Uh, connect with local businesses of where you like to shop or that you've done a business with. Uh, and then also through your social media world. So don't be afraid to ask for help in spreading the words and, and, and using your, your own network. And I would say, uh, as you go through this process, be sure to um, be thorough. Answer the questions they might have about what you're trying to tell them. Um, and then when you put uh, something together about you know, what you've got, be sure and proofread it, uh, double check it. Uh, have I answered everything? Um, have I given them the information that they might need if I want them to be a buyer? Have, you, have I made it easy for them to be a part of, of uh, you know, a sale? Not everybody uh, that may wanna buy beef and be part of your 4-H uh, show and sale uh, online or of the sale online might understand how an auction works so you might have to give them some basics of this is how you bid this is what an auction looks like because they might not or they might not want to buy themselves personally so that maybe they you could say well i've got someone who can help you buy and usually auction markets or these online places will have someone who could do the bidding and buying for you so try and make it as easy as possible for them to help you out and then i guess my next message would be to to be professional um, you know, don't settle for just good enough, but give it your best, whether that's out taking a picture and, and maybe the wind is blowing and the sun isn't quite right and you say, oh, well, that's just good enough. And maybe you need to wait until the next morning and, and have another chance to go out and do that picture. Or, or maybe you need to do two takes of something or, you know, do a couple of reworks on it. So make sure that you're professional and, and not just, you know, good enough. So be, be sure and, and, and give it your very best. And then I guess I would also say, uh, be grateful uh, that your job isn't necessarily just done when the animal's sold. Oof, it's got that out of the way. You need to follow through on delivery. Now, I don't know if that means if you're selling boxed beef that you go and actually help deliver, but maybe it's putting a note in with it, or maybe it's sending a note or a thank you uh, to the buyer. Uh, those are still very, very important. And, and it's amazing how many businesses display those. Uh, maybe it's giving them some mileage on social media and saying, look, this great business supported me as a 4 -er. So be sure and show some gratitude for those after they do buy at your event, once you've got them hooked and, and uh, get them used to, to buying and, and help them uh, get an animal. So be sure and, and keep that aspect of it too, to follow up and be grateful. So I guess if, if there's a couple of important things uh, today, when you are assembling your information to get the message out, be sure to answer these, these basic reporter questions who, what, where, why, when, and how. Have I answered that? Have I said who I am, who our club is, who the event, you know, who is involved in the event? 
Have I said what the event is? Have I said where it is? Have I said why? Have I said when and how they can get hooked up? And, you know, it's amazing how you can go, do this great story and maybe forget to put in when and where. And, and that's the, the key. So that's why it's so important to double check all your details to make sure you've answered all those questions. And most importantly, include some contact information so that people uh, know how to get a hold of you if they have more questions, because maybe they thought of something you haven't for a question. So be sure and include that contact information. And I guess I would just say, you know, you're part of history right now and that uh, you're maybe helping make some changes that will impact the future of 4-H uh, project marketing. And, and it might even be better for members down the road uh, or elements of it might be better when it, that we learn from this experience that we can help uh, in the future in terms of, of marketing our 4-H. And so, yes, speaking of history, uh, that is me when my 4-H uh, days were on in one of my past 4-H calves, and I do uh, remain grateful for the lessons that I learned uh, in and through 4-H. Uh, and as someone who basically started my reporting career with typewriters, uh, you can check that on your local museum or Google it to find out what that might actually be. Uh, but uh, I, I really saw a lot of technology change forced on me over the years. And, and you had to adapt uh, if you wanted to stay in, in the business. And so I think that you as, as members and leaders, uh, you can really adapt and thrive as you tap into your inner uh, innovator, inventor, whatever you want to call it. But I know with the creativity and, and the good news of uh, the 4-H project that uh, we're going to learn some great things in this year to come. So that's kind of uh, what I had to, uh, about uh, marketing and, and I look forward uh, uh, to your questions uh, as, as we go along. So, Thank you, Diane. Um, we'll have questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, right now I'm going to ask Diane to stop sharing her screen and uh, Jordy to take over and uh, we will continue on with uh, the next portion of our webinar. Um, a little bit about Jordy. Uh, uh, Jordy grew up as a fourth generation um, rancher on a Simmental and Angus purebred operation where she spent nine years as a 4-H beef member and attended many junior shows throughout the summer. She graduated from Lakeland College with a livestock diploma before returning to the family farm full-time to manage the cow herd. During this time on the farm, she had the privilege to show and judge at many cattle shows across Canada. Jordy now lives in the Cochrane area raising a Simmental and Shorthorn herd while working for Blair's Ag. She has always loved taking pictures and began picturing sale cattle after college. Currently, Jordan is picturing and videoing hundreds of sale cattle throughout the year as a career with Golden Thread Livestock Images. Please welcome Jordy Buba. Hi, guys. Um, yeah, this is kind of my passion, so it's neat to kind of talk about it and um, hopefully share a few tips and tricks to um, always make picturing and video day go a little smoother. Um, I think, like Diane said, we're always um, using things like picture and videos to obviously promote not only your animal, but yourself. So I think I um, really want to touch on that too, that like she said, um, you know, make yourself presentable. Um, the smile always goes a long way. Um, you know, you never know who's going to see this, um, either video or picture. Um, now with social media or that, so, you know, you never know if it's maybe going to be a future buyer of maybe a female down the road or maybe a future um, boss you may have or um, anything like that. So I think really um, just keep that in mind too. Like I know always when, you know, sometimes we go to shows, they always say, well, this is just a showmanship class and this is a confirmation class. For me, that's one of the biggest pet peeves is when people call that just because, um, for me, it, it shouldn't matter. There should be no, there should be no difference. You should always be presenting yourself and your animal at the best of your ability um, every time. Because like I said, you never know who's going to be um, watching or see it and um, what them seeing you at your best um, may hold for your future or play a part in that. So again, I think um, as you're thinking of different ways to promote your animal this year and getting these pictures and videos, just um, always remember that, that that's, you know, this is going to, hopefully be spread hugely for you and um, lots of people will see it and that um, it'll help market yourself and not only your animal. Um, so yeah, so I, I think again, the outcome of this picture and video on how much work um, you put into it is gonna again, show your buyer how much 
um, you know, you've, you've worked for this animal, uh, you've worked to get it to this point, because again, we realize that your, your projects have started way back in November, and then now they're just finishing kind of April, May, and June. So, you know, you've got a lot of time and effort into this animal already, and so we don't just want to slough it off, um, again, like Diane said, and just, just leave it, you're selling it, done, finished. Um, kaput, right? You want to you wanna really promote this animal and yourself and show the buyer um, how much time and effort and hopefully they'll give you that much time, effort and um, quality back into your project as hopefully resulting in a price or however you um, are selling this, this animal. Um, so yeah, so again, there's a few things that you just want to start with. Again, like um, anything, every picture and video day will go a little easier for you if um, everything's, you know, as broke as it can be. Um, I know obviously a lot of you aren't going to have shows, but your animal still needs to be broke, um, which is the easiest um, to obtain the picture and video you want. So um, obviously there, you can picture them, not on a halter in that, but um, I think um, for the 4-H deal, it's especially important for a buyer to see a face of the project. Um, again, a young young member is always a pretty big selling feature and uh, you're the future of our agricultural industry. So to get your faces out there is always a nice um, treat at the end of a halter uh, for that project. So I think, yeah, make sure your animal's um, broke and ready to go, just like you were going to show, you know, you want to have it washed and ready and clipped and, and all that stuff and, and put as much effort into that as, as you were going to go to the show with it. Um, to start with again, and that'll help um, make picturing day go a lot easier. Um, again, a few things that we can talk about when we go to um, getting ready uh, for your picturing or video day, whether or not you do these on the same day. Um, sometimes it's easier to do them on the same day. And again, um, depending on what the day is like, it may be easier just to focus on one and then do another. Um, another day or again I'll resort to what Diane said take your time on this don't be afraid to um, take a couple of pictures go back to the house look at them and say hey uh, you know I know my animal looks better than that let's try it again because um, again you want this the best animal um, presented uh, to your potential buyer so I always just keep a few things like that in mind I know sometimes um, depending who you've conned in to be your cameraman or your helper, uh, patience sometimes runs out on that, but I, I promise you that um, the best you can do sometimes may take the longest or um, it's not always just a quick go snap a couple pictures and call it good kind of deal. So um, definitely remember that as you're going into it. Um, as we go along for both um, your picture and video, make sure you're uh, backdrop is kind of as clear and less cluttered as possible. Um, again, you want the focal point always to be um, your animal or your animal and yourself um, as you go on to it. So you don't want, you know, um, a huge distracted background. Obviously, again, um, with now spring, we've got lots of mud and that kind of stuff. So sometimes always the area you may want to try in um, isn't available, but again, just uh, do the best you can and work with kind of what you got. Um, so yeah, I'll maybe just pull up a couple um, pictures here as we go and we can start with the pictures and then we'll go um, to our uh, video. Um, maybe I'll just share my whole screen here. Um, so yeah, so again, I think um, when you are picturing videoing, make sure that you um, it's always nice to have a second animal with you um, just to keep your animal nice and calm and um, nice and calm and kind of in its own environment. Again, um, taking the animal to the spot that you're going to picture um, beforehand is also another um, really nice idea that, uh, again, we can um, you know, get this animal familiarized with the, with the setting that it's going to be. And again, as we go and, um, and, you know, it's just like I always tell members when I'm doing a presentation or whatever, as we go along to your 4-H day, you know, it's nice if you can jump your, your animal on the trailer and just take them to your friends or whatever for the day. So he gets used to that trailer ride and, and trust you and um, knows that, you know, everything's going to be okay when you go to a new, a new deal. So um, 
yeah, obviously I don't have um, as many show pictures and that kind of that you guys are going to go for, but I wanted to spring up a couple uh, pictures that I've taken the spring of bulls. So just kind of show you the background kind of stuff um, as we go along. So again, this is, um, you know, uh, a shot that we maybe have a little bit more obviously um, going on in our background and that kind of thing. But I think, um, again, like I said, if you, if you don't have an option to get a nice clear background, we've got this bull um, pulled away from that a little bit, you know, so he's not, uh, these other, these other cattle aren't right beside him, you know, kind of right underneath him. Um, they're kind of back in the distance a little bit, again, making him the, the focal point of the picture. Um, and, and, you know, kind of just a clear shot, but, you know, like I said, we, in this scenario, we did have some cattle in the background and, um, it's just kind of always, um, working with what you got. So again, as we go along, here's another shot. You know, obviously this is a nice, clean, crisp background. We've got nothing out there except um, obviously our, our panels that we've had to work with um, um, for our pen. So again, you know, you always have obviously more options um, with a lead calf than you do um, a loose animal. These these two bulls were um, loose in the pen. Obviously they're not halter broke. So, um, you know, and again, we've we've worked them in the, the uh, pen to um, to make sure we've got them in the right spot. Um, I guess when we talk about the right spot, that's probably um, lighting and that kind of stuff for us. So always make sure um, your person with the camera has their back to the sun um, to allow you to get uh, the most light on the animal's body um, along with eliminating uh, shadows. So obviously we got some shadows right now on this bull's ear. Um, but, you know, we try to eliminate shadows from his flank area, again, to show how much uh, definition is in that flank, um, how much muscle on that he's got. So just a few um, things like that. And again, um, you know, if you want to go out with your own camera a couple times, just out in a pen and picturing some loose cattle, just to kind of figure out where you need um, your calf to be and where um, you need your, the person helping you to be, um, that's great, right? With digital cameras, we can take as many um, pictures as you need. It doesn't cost anything to develop, anything like that, right? So just remember that you can, there's tons of options to do things like that to get, um, to get the shot you want. So again, um, here's the background that we used, um, a windbreak fence. Again, that was what was in the pen. Um, this bull's in some straw, you know, so he's totally popping off that background. Uh, our lighting's good. This bull's actually got no uh, shadows on them. So we probably had a day that was just a little cloudier, um, again, which allows you to eliminate your shadows. Uh, so here I borrowed a few friends, um, actual uh, pictures that they had used for a show that was one of the first kind of virtual ones we had online here. So again, you can see um, these guys, uh, you know, eliminated their background. They've got a nice uh, windbreak background. This calf's in the middle of the pen he's set up nice uh, you know they've got the show halter show stick he's you know kind of in that show ring pro pose that you want to use um, to promote your animal um, so the only thing i would probably change on this picture again is that um, the person the person was in it giving you um, a better idea of who the person is on the halter and that kind of stuff but i think as far as background clarity um, and that kind of stuff this picture is pretty ideal for that um, again, this is a friend from uh, BC with the nice green grass already growing. Um, but again, I think the animal set up um, ideal position. Again, we have a little bit more going on in the background, but it's a consistent background. So um, the animal still pops the best. Um, again, he's on a show halter, all that. Um, I would suggest for the 4-H selling aspect of it um, that the kid was in the, in the picture. But I think as far as um, everything else that's going on this photo um, is just a really clear, crisp um, idea of what you guys want to go for. Um, so yeah, so again, with that, you know, we want um, you to be respectfully dressed, um, if possible, if you can get out of your muck boots for the photo and that kind of deal. Again, um, like I said, just present yourself like you're walking in the show ring with that animal. Um, you know, you've got both these kids put show halters on their animal, which is, you know, a really just nice touch to clean it up. And again, just really show that you've gone that extra mile um, and are, are giving it your best um, in the circumstances and what you have to work with. Um, again, uh, this prepared with the show stick, all that kind of stuff as we go. 
Um, so these are both just, or they've all been side profiles, but I think um, in marketing a steer project, you probably want to get a rear shot as well. Um, again, just to show how much um, muscle that calf has, how big that loin is, how wide the top is, um, which you totally don't 100% get that um, in these side profile shots. So I think if you um, ideally can get both, that's great. Um, obviously, in most marketing aspects for cattle, uh, we always go to the side profile as our um, go-to shot. But again, I think for the steer marketing deal, definitely the, the side profile would be, um, uh, or sorry, a back profile would be something uh, to really go along with. Um, so again, yeah, when we go to um, our videos, we're going to look kind of to the same thing. I'll just play, um, I'll play the bull videos again here, um, just to kind of see, again, if you do need to have a loose Loose animal, um, you know, this is, we want a nice walking shot, consistently walking. Um, anytime we do video, we always have somebody behind, obviously pushing these bulls. Um, also in this frame, you can see I've put a lot number at the bottom and uh, the person's uh, logo. So again, I think um, because you're not gonna have a lot of distractions in the background, you know, uh, add a little bit of info there on the bottom on how um, either you're selling it or just your name and your club's name, a phone number, um, whatever. We don't, you know, you don't want a lot of distractions, but I think, um, uh, again, a way for somebody to get uh, contact you and that and uh, while they're looking at these videos is um, a useful idea. Um, so normally, yeah, normally we go on these videos to be um, 30 to 45 seconds of just the footage of the animal. Um, again, I, I don't think you want to distract your person, you know, making it too long or have them bored of the video. If you did, you know, want to put a page either after or before again with, a, with contact information and that kind of stuff on, I think um, definitely do that and make that video probably a little longer. You'll probably look at maybe a minute video then um, or whatever you decide. Always remember though, if you are doing um, contact info page you want um, want to make sure that that page is left on there long enough that that person can easily uh, read what's going on obviously they can pause it in that but you know if you can leave um, it on there long enough that they can read through it quickly um, I, I think that's a really good aspect of it so again here's these same um, kids is with the calves on the halter so these are obviously just going to be cell phone videos of these kids that, again, they had, I think it had to be 20 seconds um, for this show. That was the recommendation of it. So again, you can see um, the cameraman's gone from the side profile um, to the back of the steer um, to again show, to show all aspects of it. Um, again, I think really nice video. I'd probably say the calf could have walked a little longer again, just to get, get the feel of what's going on there. Um, and again, you know, the background of this one, you know, we've got some cows and that on the go there, but they're not, they're not close up. They're far enough away that, um, you know, this is obviously probably just what this person had to work with. And, you know, they may do, um, again, the focus of this video is this calf uh, that we can clearly see. The other thing I would do is if you are going to use a cell phone, which is, which is fine, they take great videos, just turn it to the landscape. This would be a portrait um, taken video and if you just change it to the landscape uh, your uh, which would just kind of be flipping its phone to its blank side you'll be able to um, catch more of yourself and the animal without with getting close enough but um, not getting you out of frame I think that's really important is that you always remain in the center of that uh, frame so if you just change it to landscape um, you just have a little bit more ability and length of of screen to um, work with yourself. Because again, you know, we don't need um, as much of the sky and this bottom as this uh, portrait uh, orientation is showing us. So if we could change it to landscape, uh, I think it really just uh, helps what's on the go. Uh, so one last video again here, I think this, this does um, a really nice job of showing uh, the front of the animal a little bit and then we got some nice side profile and then we get um, to the rear as well. It's not obviously as much set to the rear as that first video was but again you see this the animal walking away from you and then he'll just come back here a little bit. So again um, you know minimal distractions in the background. Uh, both these animals have 
animals have had good footing um, underneath them for the videos, which again is always key. You don't want them obviously slipping and sliding um, in the video. So just make caution of that on what, um, where you're going to be doing it. Um, so again, halter, loose, um, it doesn't really matter, I don't think. Again, if they're broke, it's really nice to have a nice, for your sake, uh, marketing video on a halter. Um, so yeah, so again, I think that's kind of all. Um, most digital cameras, they will have a video setting mode, and I would suggest, if possible, um, taking your video with your digital camera opposed to your cell phone. Um, again, just the quality will be a touch better. Um, clarity will just be a little bit better as you go on and are going to um, promote it on either some different websites or maybe an online um, auction site. So I think that's, um, yeah, kind of what I got um, as far as the kind of quick little pointers on things that, um, yeah, I think are just little ticks and trips that we can um, for sure work on and that are easy for you guys to work on since you've got so much time at home now with no school and stuff. So, yeah. Thank you, Jordy. And uh, definitely uh, some great, great points there too. I'm going to turn it over to uh, Lexi Hoy next. And uh, she is going to kind of go over some of the uh, things about the 4-H uh, image that we have to uphold during all the different things that we're going to be, be trying out during this new Achievement Day session. So uh, I'll turn it over to Lexi now. All right, thanks, Rod. So I'm hoping that everybody is seeing my screen here. Zoom always makes me a little nervous because I can't see what everybody else sees. So using the 4-H brand, um, so a number of 4-H clubs and districts are doing a great job of promoting what they're doing already. We know that 4-H Achievement Day season is upon us already. Um, March seemed to last forever and April has gone by in a blink. So I just wanted to let everybody know some of the 4-H brand requirements, if you will, um, because any brand worth having is worth doing properly. And we really wanna make sure that everybody is able to recognize the 4-H brand and use it properly and so that it is recognized in our communities uh, with the appropriate um, items in it, I guess you could say. So it's really quite simple. 4-H, um, we all know it's 4-H, and uh, yep, the dash is required, and you do need to capitalize the H. So that's something really quite simple when you're writing it in a sentence or, or referencing 4-H, please make sure that you do 4-H. And then also I wanted to highlight um, a couple of the appropriate use of, or the appropriate logos to use within 4-H Alberta. So you can use the 4-H Alberta logo here with the 4-H um, Alberta underneath the Canada logo, or you can just use the uh, straight up 4-H Canada logo. These logos have to be used like this. You can't um, change out the center part of it or, or add any writing within certain restrictions. And that's why I've added these links here. Um, I'm not sure that you'll be able to, to link them from, from this slide, but I wanted you to have the website addresses. The other place that you can find these is on the 4-H Canada or 4-H Alberta websites. If you simply search 4-H logo, even in Google, straight up Google, it should spit out the 4-H Canada a club logo generator and or the 4-H Canada visual identity guide. So both of these locations will tell you um, the colors that you can use as well uh, as the logo that you can use and how you can use it. Uh, the logo generator is actually a pretty cool tool if you're not aware. Um, in, in, in looking up this actually I discovered that this logo has been around for five years already so I'm sure that most of you have found the club logo generator and that will help you find the appropriate places to put your club name around this logo. Um, and as I did mention, there were a few other colors that uh, are appropriate brand use, but in all honesty, I'm, I'm really just wanting to focus on the fact that right now we need to be using the 4-H and one of these two logos in all of our, our marketing. And also feel free to connect with 4-H Alberta on social media. You can see here our tag is at 4-H Alberta. And we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this video, as we mentioned, will be on YouTube um, either late this, later this evening or tomorrow morning, but definitely by tomorrow morning. So that's all I have on brand use at this time. Um, I think some clubs are doing some great things and we look forward to seeing what everybody can do. Excellent, thanks Lexi. Um, let's go on to uh, some questions now for, for our panelists. And um, I've just, uh, just got one here. Uh, 
do you think that uh, members should be going out and hiring a professional photographer for uh, for doing the the videoing and uh, marketing of their of their animals? Yeah, I, th I think that's. Uh, of course, I would like to say yes, but um, uh, obviously, I think that's you know, if you want um, all your photos as a club. Um, to be the same, uh, videos to be the same again, whether you're, you know, I know some clubs are doing the online route, um, you know, so those, those projects are all being marketed at the same time, one place, um, you know, so I think consistency is probably the key in a few of those things. So, you know, having the same person come um, and, and do your videos and your pictures is a great idea. Obviously, um, the social distancing thing right now plays probably a huge factor in that, that um, lots of those options aren't going to be available. But I know there's, you know, um, even if you can take the videos, I'm sure a lot of these photographers and uh, videographers would be more than happy to help you at least edit them. I'm um, again to get the most out of your picture um, and video that you can. Um, again, uh, like I said, you know, a couple of those shots were taken with just a cell phone um, and they're, they're great. They're, you know, as high quality as uh, the videos and pictures I've taken with, um, you know, my uh, expensive gear most days. But um, again, I think as long as you, the clubs and that focus on um, getting that picture to the best they can, you know, making sure that calf is in focus. Um, and again, just that those distractions are out from behind them. Um, and like I said, just really work on it. If, you know, if you're not sure on how to do it, just take a couple shots and go back and look and see what you need to do. But um, again, I think uh, probably the hiring um, somebody right now is, is probably not accepted, but um, yeah, it kind of depends on what route you want to go. From a storyteller side, uh, Diane, what do you think? Oh, you're muted. And Thank I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess, uh, you know, from a practical standpoint, I think you have to go with what works in, in your area. Um, if, if someone has connections in the club with uh, a professional photographer and someone who uh, might be able uh, to help you out in a safe way, uh, then, then yeah, I, that, sure, that's a great opportunity. But I, in some areas that may not be as practical or possible. So I think it would be hard to say that you have to do that. But, you know, I guess that's the thing. Everyone's having to figure out what works best for them. And, uh, you know, having good pictures uh, it helps enhance the story for sure. Okay, uh, we have a question here. Is there a preferred level to take the photo or videos of, an, of the animal at? Um, well, I'm not a very tall person. So most of the time I, um, you know, I'm just kind of fine shooting an animal at, at level where I am. Um, obviously if it's a smaller animal, I'll bend down a little bit and I have um, some tall photography and friends that have to bend down. But I think um, again, as long as your picture is um, centered in, in frame, so um, that that animal is takes up one third the middle of the photo, and then you've got kind of a third of sky on top and a third of uh, the ground at the bottom, kind of gives you, um, you know, where you need to be as far as level, um, whether you need to stand a little taller or just stuck down a little bit in your animal. So just kind of picture that that your finished project needs to be. Um, in thirds, if, if that kind of makes sense. Okay. Um, another question here is in, in pictures or videos, and you're going to be posting this, should, they, should we be looking at just the picture of an animal or animal and the member, or which do you think would be the best? Uh, yeah, obviously, um, you know, we take a uh, sale cattle are loose so they're just um solely in the in the photo i think for um a show photo though we do always has the 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 animal and the person leading it and obviously there's sometimes the judge and all that sort of stuff in the background um i definitely think for these uh 4-h uh marketing uh 
ways that you're going to sell your animal now i think the person for sure in there is important again i think it just shows how much work you've done with your animal and how nice and calm halter broke you've got it that you know you can go out and you've led it to an area that um is is unfamiliar it's not its normal pen it's not just tied to a fence so i think all um all that really shows um how much effort you've put into it if you're physically standing um in the picture with the animal again um, I know maybe some of these kids may not have the ability, they may need to be the one taking the photo of the animal. So again, um, there's just, again, different circumstances that um, may not allow them to be in the, in the photo. But I think um, as far as marketing you and yourself and how much effort you've done, um, most times if you can be in the photo with your animal would be um, the highest of um, priorities. Okay. Uh what do you recommend for lamb photos or videos? Well, I've never had to shoot any lambs or, <laughs> or small animals yet. But again, I think, I think um, just kind of the same as, as, our, as the beef ones. You know, you want to get um, your animal um, in a background that's less distracting. Again, you know how to set up your animal to the best of the ability. So make sure you've got that under control. You know, you want your your lamb to be comfortable with you. So again, having it broken used to you. Um, and again, obviously um, taking photos of a lamb um, or video, you'll wanna be obviously lower set because you'll be way too high um, if you're just um, standing up opposed to, you know, and you may need to be kneeling down on the ground or um, more at uh, equal level to the lamb as opposed to um, higher with a beef animal. Okay. Thank you. Um, Diane, how do you approach the media? I know in your, in your presentation, you've, you've put, uh, you know, various uh, media outlets. How do you approach them? I think they're probably more approachable than you'd think. And especially now, everyone's looking for content. And like I mentioned, uh, you've got a good news story in 4-H. And so I think uh, uh, the format that I'm used to dealing with is what, what's called a news release. And I, you'd see examples of that even on the 4-H website. But basically, uh, sort of do a bit of a headline and then tell a few facts about what's happening and then send it off. And you could do one that that nowadays, as I mentioned, you try and reach all the platforms, you can do one of those and you can call it a news release, call it a fact sheet, whatever you want to do, call it your story. And then you could use that same uh, content to put across all of the, the platforms in, in one way or another. So again, you know, you'd have a headline, you'd have uh, you know, who's involved. And again, looking at those five W's and how making sure all those bases are covered in it. Then in terms of actually reaching out to the media, uh, it, it goes back to that detective thing. Look around at your local media. Um, if you get a local newspaper at home, and you think it might be great to get something in there. Usually on the editorial page, there'll be something about contact us, even on the website. Some of them you have to look a little harder than others, but if you look for that contact us page, usually there's a place where you can submit something or at least have an email address. Oftentimes it's news editor at, and then the name of the outlet. Um, same with the radio station, uh, if it's in your area, you know, if you know someone or if there's someone that you want to connect with personally at one of the announcers or whatever, then you, again, you can usually reach them online or by the phone. But um, some people are staying at home nowadays, so probably online is, is better. Uh, but then messages are being passed along too. So you could try either the phone or, or email. And uh, like I say, most of them would have a, a way because we're always looking for information. So it's in our best interest to put that out there. So uh, come up with, uh, you know, uh, something, some kind of a content and, uh, you know, brief and concise and then send it along and, and that's how you reach them. Thanks, Diane. Uh, we have some uh, 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 questions coming in from Facebook. Uh, can anyone recommend an editing program that is simple to use from home that incorporates stills, videos in a JPEG form? Uh, I, I just use uh, Adobe Photoshop for all my um, editing. They have, um, obviously Photoshop is the, the one for um, photos and then Premiere Pro is the one for videos. But I know um, before I kind of started doing the videos full time, I just had downloaded a quick little 
um, deal offline and um, it worked just as, as quick and easy to edit your video. So again, um, yeah, you can find lots on online that are, um, you know, even just a free trial if you want to try one. Um, I know Adobe does that. You get a free trial for, I think, seven or ten days um, to get all the stuff. And then, um, you know, and then if you don't need it in the future, you're good. But uh, yeah, I just use um, Adobe Photoshop for all my um, editing. Okay. Uh, Diane, any, any hints from you? I, in terms of editing, I mostly use, uh, I have, have used a audio program here at home to, to, to do an audio interview and, and that kind of a thing. Um, a lot of times on your phone, you will have an, uh, an opportunity to uh, do an audio interview. Like if you wanted to record an interview with members of with each other, you can use, um, use your phone often. There's an app in that in your phone. And then you might still have to download it and play around in your computer to uh, find a, a bit of a program that would help you edit a little bit of that. Or even if you were going to submit something to a radio station, you would, you know, record, say, record an interview and then they could help you edit it or uh, would edit it as well. And I should just maybe sneak in here as well. I know that many clubs, uh, I think there's like over 22 clubs and a couple of lambs that have uh, got a charity animal. Uh, that's a great news story to get out there too. And I know 4-H is helping kind of get the word out, but if you're a club that does have a charity animal, that would be a great uh, story. Make them aware that you're doing a charity animal and then maybe that would help uh, make people aware that you're having your own sale as well and that they could maybe buy an individual animal as well. So uh, again, if you've got those charity animals, that's great. And I know there's some really innovative ideas for getting uh, those marketed uh, this year and still helping out charities. And, and those are great community stories that I think people are anxious to hear. So um, a lot of community Facebook pages in little towns and, and um, in, in big cities as well. So uh, try and find your community Facebook page or your community bulletin board or whatever it is and, and get that word out even on the, the charity animals as well. Okay. Uh, Dan, we also have uh, an, another question. I don't fully understand it, so I'm not, not sure if I'm going to get it right, but it's on, on timelines. I, I think that's how, how soon should they be actually going out and, and doing the work uh, to, to get that in front of uh, potential buyers? Yeah, that is a good question. And I guess that varies on your media outlet. I think you have to be conscious and check if you've got a weekly newspaper, uh, they are going to be, uh, you know, publishing ahead of when you get the paper. Um, so uh, you would want to communicate that with them and maybe ask them, send an email, when do I need to get this information in by? Um, so that you find out what day their print day is. So you've got that content in there soon enough so that it's in people's hands before your event happens. Again, with uh, social media, that's a lot more immediate. And so I think you can be a more immediate, I, I think it, it's always that sweet spot, finding it where you're not so far ahead that people forget about it, or but they're not so close that you're not giving them time to prepare. So sometimes it can be a series of announcements. So maybe you say, hey, look, our club is doing uh, this. Uh, this is how we're marketing it. And then maybe the next week you do another little announcement and say, just a reminder, this is coming up or, or uh, a how to, if you are interested in buying how to, um, or did you know little facts that you can use on social media to kind of keep the message there, but not um, help, you know, so they don't forget about it, but then uh, gives them a little time to be considering it and planning it, especially if, if they're not familiar with uh, doing it. So they might need some more information. So uh, again, at least I would say, you know, one to two weeks for sure, uh, maybe a little bit longer if you're working with your newspaper. And again, uh, radio stations can be somewhat immediate, uh, but you know, you, you want to try and, and give a little bit of time for that preparation and getting it on the air. Um, and, and social media too, don't leave it until the day before, I guess is, is my message. I mean, I'm a procrastinator and I tend to push deadlines, but you do need them uh, out there, even on social media, because you got to think of that buyer again, or that potential buyer, you know, if, if they don't know how to buy through an online auction, and they've got to get information or maybe there's going to be a couple people team up to buy steer together they need a little time for that so again thinking of your buyers needs try and give them a little extra time so that they can make some of those preparations and, and be ready to, to to join you on the sale okay great thanks when is a good time to take a video for the best sunlight uh 
That's sunlight. Normally, I'd say, well, as we get into these longer days, you can shoot shoot longer, but um, anywhere kind of from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is kind of your best. And again, um, you'll want to change the direction you're shooting at um, in the morning opposed to the, the afternoon. So uh, in the morning, your photographer will want their back to the sun, which will be in the the west so um, the photographer will be shooting um, to the northeast and then the sun will be oh no that's wrong the sun's in the east in the morning west in the afternoon so then you'll you'll switch and you'll be shooting to the north east in the afternoon so again um, depends where your picture pen is uh, your backdrop and all that if you have um, a building on one side uh, that's going to cause shadows at either the morning or the afternoon um, you'll want to obviously shoot the opposite so that you don't have um, shadows in your picture okay another question here do you think that video should have still pictures joined to it and one long video with all the members um I, yeah, I think, I think there's, there's value in both. Um, again, getting, uh, your picture out there, uh, with yourself is always good. Uh, again, depends, um, how long you want that video to be too, as, as, as per how much content, um, you're going to put into it. I think sometimes, um, less can be more, you know, you don't want to override these, these buyers and that with one huge, long, long video, you know, you want to keep them, um, kind of wanting more. So I think sometimes maybe a few uh, shorter videos is better. Like I said, we always, um, for sale cattle, always kind of try to be that 30 to 45 seconds. So you kind of get um, a good feel for the animal, but you know, you're not, you're not kind of done looking at them um, by the end of the video. So um, yeah, pictures I think are fine. And like I said, if you want to include, um, you know, a page at the beginning or the end on, on how you're selling your steer, where he's going to sell, um, your name, your location um, is always great tips in that. Um, but I think probably, and again, depending on how you're, you're marketing this, I, I, would, I would probably say I would prefer um, individual uh, videos of each animal um, and member um, opposed to probably a long club one. I think you could probably do kind of a fun club one where there's just little snippets of, of each and every member again to... Um, get your buyer to want to come and look um, at your projects and that to kind of uh, antagonize them to come in and grab their attention and then um, have kind of every in individual's um, uh, video after that. Excellent. Thank you. I see that we're, we're coming up to an hour on, on the webinar and it looks like uh, we're just about out of questions here too. So I just wanted to kind of kind of do an overall wrap up. I, I'd really like to thank both of, well, actually all three of you for talking today about uh, everything is fantastic. I think that uh, one of the things that I really took away from, from Diane's uh, presentation is that you shouldn't just look at that as a marketing aspect for this year. All of that information can be applied to for every year that you're actually in 4-H. And, and those are great tips and tricks that, that should be utilized and, and uh, taken, taken to heart. Um, one of, one of the other things that, uh, that I think that we should be doing as, as uh, members or members should be doing is actually going out and personally at, attracting the, the buyers. It's, it's always good to see members making that, taking that initiative, going out and whether it's videoing the animal with, with, their, with, their, with themselves, telling a story like Diane had said, I think those go a long way to buyers actually creating that bond, that buyer and seller bond that they're actually going to want to come and, and purchase that animal. And, and this year being different from, from all the past, we don't know what auctions are going to do. And, and coming in with these sort of tri tricks will, will definitely help out. Um, and using all the, the different media uh, that are out there, uh, I think, I think it's great to actually call the people and, and uh, start talking to them because uh, like you say, I think that everyone's looking for a good news story nowadays. All we see is the bad. And the way that we can kind of, um, pr promote a, a positive image is, is absolutely great. Um, and the one thing that I think that, that is very important this year is, is ensure that everyone follows through with thank yous. Thank yous to everyone. And, and 
they, when they come out and support 4-H in a positive manner, we have to do the thank yous. So I think that the, the other thing that we have to look at as well is that we present not only your project, but yourself in a positive manner. And you don't want to go out and when some of the videos that Jordy was showing in your car hearts and muck boots, you know, dress up. We're, we're, we're showing off a, a great project and yes, it's different, but be proud. Be proud of your accomplishments through the year and make sure that you're showing your effort like Jordy had told us. So I think that even though you may not be going into a show ring this year, those animals should be broke. They should be, uh, they should be calm. They should be tame. They should be clipped. They should be look like they're well taken care of. And, and again, that comes back into the effort. The more effort you put in, the more uh, results, better results that you're going to get in the end. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, once again, I thank you very much for your time and, and uh, presentations today. Uh, this will be um, uh, up on YouTube uh, probably tomorrow morning. So anybody who wants to can take and uh, go back and, and view some of the tricks and, and points that were presented today. So thank you for joining us today and um, stay safe and have a good evening. Bye-bye. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thank you.